Hi, I'm Jackie Carpenter from One Giant Leap Australia, and we work in partnership with the Australian Space Agency on Kibo ABC. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Asian Herb in Space program. It's been highly successful in Australia, and we began with growing the sweet basil with probably around 180,000 students enrolled in the schools that we sent kits to. One of the most important things of this project, I feel, was that we had the involvement of the New South Wales Chief Scientist and Engineer who sponsored 100 kits to go to 10 regional and rural remote schools in New South Wales. So schools that would normally not get the opportunity to participate in such a program were funded to be part of our one year project. What happened with those schools? Some of the schools, it was so cold that the basil couldn't grow. There was a lot of um, toing and froing on email and a lot of excitement in the community around being involved in such an amazing program. We still have teachers doing the basil program because of the impact of COVID on schools being open and closed. They did not want to do the project without the students. So our data gathering is still continuing. We had so many social media posts. Schools went on the news. They were on the local radio. We could not keep up with recording and documenting the amount of social media. So you can find a lot of it if you go onto Google and just do a Google search on um, Asian Herb in Space or seedsinspace.com.au. You will find a lot of information there. Some of the lessons we have learned, um, the hard thing is COVID. The thing that that's impacted is trying to do a program where you really would like to be able to start say, ready, set, go, and everyone start at the same time. But because of COVID and the impact of that, everyone, it was a staggered start. So it's been very difficult to have an absolute finalised stop time. So what we're doing is we're just leaving it all open. When All the gathering of the data is all on our website, seedsinspace.com.au. If you find Asian Herb in Space, you'll see there's a member login. So behind that, all the schools and the locations are logging in and recording their data. So once we feel that the that it's run its course, we will get some people to come and have a look and see what research and what data um, and gather it all together and culminate it in a report. But right now we're still just leaving it open because we do not want to close off the opportunity. So... Improvements for next time, obviously it would be lovely to be able to start and stop at all exactly the same time. And our expectations are pretty much the same, that we do not want to impose too much research on the teachers given the amount of work that they do do. So leaving it open-ended for them to add, change, um increase the type of research that they do, increase the complexity of the research is open to them. I feel that if we make this too difficult, a lot of teachers would say, I don't have time. So what it would be really, I feel that we really hit a good balance of science and research, as well as being able to leave it open to teachers who might have more of a passion in this area, or people who might have better or bigger contacts and more resources than others. So we want to make sure that we are inclusive, that it's equitable, and that it's a diverse range of um, people and schools involved. The um, parents loved the fact their children were doing such an exciting project. The teachers loved the fact that they were doing something a bit different and were involved. And we love the fact that we could reach out to all the communities in our country to be involved. And I would like to now talk about the What Will Happen to the Wattle program. Little did we know how um, that program would expand globally. We sent the wattle seeds to the space station, not really knowing that 
our program would end up in other countries as well as our own. So the What Will Happen to the Waddle program now, we have 300 locations in our country growing the wattle with varying degrees of success. We still have schools who haven't started. So still the impact of COVID and the flooding that's happening in our community, some of the wattle has even flooded floated off and floated away. So we've had to resupply some of the schools with kits, but some schools still have not started, even though the program has been running for more than a year. So the teachers have been holding on to the kits until things get a bit more settled. They now have to wait till it's warmer before they can start their wattle experiment. So just recently we've had a couple of schools contact us and say that they've just started. So they've been holding on to their wattle kits in their school classrooms and just waiting for everything to settle down for them to get started. So in the meantime, at the beginning of the year, we went to the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Centre in Dubai and they now are going to be growing the space wattle seeds. And we know that the Australian Embassy in Tokyo have had great success with growing their space wattle seeds. Their space wattle trees are about this high now, so they're very, very happy that um, that they've been successful in their growth. And then also, too, we've had and we will be expanding the program into um, America. So we've had interest in Minnesota. We've had interest in California and we've had interest in a few other places as well. So we've looked up and made sure that these um, places can grow the wattle. And um, we've also had interest from Indonesia. So um, we're researching into whether that is permitted under biosecurity. The public relations activities around the what will happen to the wattle, we do know that the Japanese ambassador has mentioned um, in a big conference that it was one of the, it's been one of the biggest space science experiments being done between our two countries. It's got had great significance and a great impact. There has been so much media, everything from television news crews, there's been a children's um, news journalist come out and make a story, which is online now, so schools can access that in a program called Behind the News, which is run by our ABC, our national broadcaster. You see, these seeds are part of a big national experiment to see if spending time in space changes the way the wattle grows. And these students at Trinity Gardens in South Australia make up just one of the groups across 270 schools who are taking part. This has never been done before, so I wanted to see what would happen. They'll be planting two types of seeds, some that have been to space and some that have just stayed here on boring old Earth. So that's been done. We do know that NHK, the news Japanese news people, have done um, television programs about us as well. So we've been on Japan mainstream um, TV as well. We were, have been covered in front page media in the UAE with the Wattle program. And truly, there is no way we could keep up documenting the amount of Twitter, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, school newsletters, local newspapers, national media, national newspapers and national TV and local TV. Um, there's no way we could, we, we would need a full-time staff member to cover um, trying to keep that documented. But we are really, really happy that it's so successful. We've had... Um, Probably 17,000 teachers have um, have access to our information and also it's open source so people can access the app that we've developed. And just recently we have given 300 um, space wattle seeds to the Royal Agricultural Society of New South Wales for distribution in their program called Ag in a Box. So the Ag in the Box program 970 schools have applied to try and um, gain access to these ag in a box kits which will have con which contain the wattle seeds so there'll be 300 schools joining the already 300 schools 
um, that will have wattle seeds and we will be gathering their data. So we've only just set up a web page for that. So that's another year's program that's that's come out of the um, space travel seed program. And we would really love to do it again. Um, we have learned a lot of lessons around how to um, post out, keep accurate records of who um, has ordered what, also what teachers, the contacts, the point of contacts, trying to keep up with the movement of staff in schools has been fun. We have learned a lot, but at the same time, we feel like we can streamline this process a lot more and we'd really like to be able to do something like this again because to us it's um, high impact, very equitable, um, it leads to diverse engagement of students and teachers and it also means that we can be very inclusive of people being involved. So we would love to see that offer again about space travel seeds to be able to send more seeds up onto the International Space Station because we believe this really engages the students. Very simple idea, very huge impact. Other countries have approached us now and talking to us about sending seeds into suborbital space, for example. So we see that the Seeds in Space program, especially the Asian Herb in Space program, where people have sent seeds up into space and come back, we believe that this also engages students about thinking about not just if we go and have a habitat in another place, but also thinking about how we can feed everybody and the, and the security of our um, seed banks, for example. So both of these programs have been highly, highly successful and we treasure our um, relationship with the, with the Kibo ABC space agencies. So we would, um, and we have plans to further enhance this program and I'll talk to you about that later with the Tulsi project. So hopefully that's given you an overview of where we've expanded to since the last time, a year ago when we talked um, at this time around where we were at in Australia with these programs. But I would like to say to everybody, what a great program, how amazing has it been, and congratulations to, to you all, but from Australia and the Australian Space Agency and One Giant Leap Australia Foundation, I'd like to call out to you and say, let's make the next project, which we will be proposing, the Tulsi project. Let's try and get that happening so that we can continue on the momentum of what we've all built over the last year and a half to two years. Thank you. Thank you.